Hi friends, I am so glad that you're here. I really need your help making a Rosh Hashanah card for some really special members of our community and our congregation. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you what you need and I'll show you all the supplies that you'll have to get. And if you need to press pause, you can do that and then come back and see how to make our card. So first I'm gonna show you what you need and listen to all the supplies. And if you need to press pause to go and collect all the supplies, you can do that and then come back and press play and you can get started and catch up with us. So um, I have put down a piece of cardboard to protect my work area. So you might want to use some newspaper or you could even use a paper bag if, um, if that is something that you have. Um, you're going to need some heavy paper. I've got cardstock here. It's a little bit heavier than regular paper. You're going to need a pencil and some paint brushes. I have a few different sizes, but you don't need a bunch. I have got some markers, some red, different shades of red, and I've got a black. You're gonna need a crayon, a white crayon preferably. I have a little oil pastel, but a regular white crayon will work just as well. I have a watercolor paint palette and I have a cup of water and I have a Q-tip and that should be all that you need. So if you need to go gather your supplies, this is a good time to go get them, press pause and then come back and join us. All right. So what you're gonna do is take your cardstock and you're gonna fold it in half. You're just gonna press corner to corner and then um, just press down along your seam, the fold. And we're gonna turn our card so that the fold is at the top. So our picture is a little bit wider. So what we're gonna be making today is a symbol for Rosh Hashanah. One of the symbols, it's a pomegranate. And this is one that I made earlier, and I'm gonna show you how to draw this and then to paint it. So um, just a few things that I'll point out. Um, uh, this is where our white crayon comes in, and I'll explain that later. We've got a few little seeds sitting on the ground. There's a highlight here and some shading, and this is the crown of our pomegranate. So let's get started. I'll show you how to do it. So we're gonna start over on the left side of our paper. We're gonna draw kind of a roundish shape. Draw lightly with your pencil. You don't wanna bear down too hard because that can make a dent in your, in your paper. And if I had been drawing too hard with my pencil, this line that I don't like would have made a dent that would show up when I was painting. So that's why you wanna use a nice soft, soft pressure when you're drawing. And so now that I have kind of my roundish shape, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna make my crown. So I'm gonna just come up to the top and I'm gonna come straight up and make a shape like the letter M so that's part of my crown. And then in the middle of my M, I'm gonna just come up and make a triangle coming up. So that makes it look more like a pomegranate crown. Then over here, I'm gonna make that wedge that looks like a piece of the pomegranate um, got cut out. So I'm gonna do that by making just like a nice big smile shape. And then I'm gonna connect that with a straight line coming across. And then over here, I'm coming to where my straight line and my smile meet, and I'm gonna come down, and I'm just gonna kind of mirror that curved shape and come around and um, connect it down to the bottom of the curve. So that makes it look like um, a wedge that's maybe turned on its side a little bit. So that's really as 
as much drawing as there is, pretty simple. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do that um, membrane part of our pomegranate. So if you've ever eaten a pomegranate, there are lots of seeds inside and there's some membranes that are kind of white and um, some thick part um, inside the skin. So I'm gonna use the white crayon to create what's called a resist, which um, just means that wherever I put the white crayon, the paint isn't really going to stick to it. So it's gonna keep that area white and I don't have to worry about not painting over that part because that would be really kind of challenging to not fill in some of those white areas. So I don't really know what the white membrane looks like. It doesn't have to be exact. I think it just kind of, I don't know what it does. I just think if we just do a few lines um, and you can't really see that so well because um, it's white on white, but that's okay. It's all gonna come out beautifully. I have confidence. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our paint. So this is a paint palette, as I bet you've worked with before. One of the things that I like to do is use the lid of my paint palette for mixing my colors. And you can see I've done that before and you can hear my dogs barking. Um, so I'll, um, I might do a little bit of color mixing, but uh, I'm going to start with this part, this small part of my pomegranate. And the reason I'm gonna start there is when you're working with watercolors, um, if you want, if you don't want your, uh, your colors to blend, you want one section to be dry before going on and painting another section that's going to be touching it. So I'm gonna paint this part first so that I can come back over um, and paint the seeds of my pomegranate without worrying too much about those colors blending. So I'm gonna start with some nice red and you definitely wanna get your brush nice and wet, get your paints nice and wet because when you're using watercolors, you really need that water to make the paint flow. And water um, can be used in lots of different ways. I'm gonna um, actually get a little bit of purple on my brush now because I'm gonna use that purple to make uh, the red look a little less bright because I think of a pomegranate as being more of a maroon color maybe or a magenta color and then it's also going to the purple is going to make this part look darker where it's um, maybe not as in the light as this part of the pomegranate. And if I want to blend that some more, I can add more red to it. I can add more water to it. But I think that's gonna, I think that's gonna be kind of pretty. Kind of happy with that. So now I'm gonna move over to the big pomegranate. And this is where if I had a big brush, it would come in really handy. So you wanna use the right size brush for the size of your um, shape that you're painting. So this is not a great watercolor brush cause it's very stiff. But I'm gonna see if I can make it work. It's just the biggest brush I have with me right now. All right, so I'm coming over here this is the part of my pomegranate that I'm thinking of as the darker side. So I'm starting here. I'm going to add more water and more red paint. And I'm going to also add some purple. This is my shadowy shaded side.
Do you know why a pomegranate is a symbol from Rosh Hashanah? I have heard it's because the number of seeds is 613, which is the same as the number of mitzvot in the Torah. said there was a highlight which is where the light is shining on the pomegranate so I just have water on my brush now no paint and I'm just going over this part of it and you can see it's lifting off some of the red and making it look like it's lighter so it makes it look like there's light shining here and shadow over here so it makes it look nice and round you want to blend this part a little bit more. All right, I'm going to wait and paint the crown of my pomegranate after um, the big part of my um, fruit dries a little bit more because I don't want it to bleed together. So I'm going to go on and start doing the seeds of my pomegranate now. So there are two ways you can do that. I'm going to show you both ways. So the first thing you can do is take um, markers and I've got two different shades of red because the I, I like doing it this way because the seeds are if you imagine they're really round like the pomegranate so they're going to be dark parts and they're going to be light parts. So I'm just going to do lots of little swirly shapes. Lots of just swirly swirlies, and I don't even really have to worry about where the membranes are. All right. And then I'm going to go over it with the red. More swirlies, circles. Lots and lots and lots and lots of seeds. So that is one way that you can do your seeds. And I might even go back over it with some more of this. Mark a darker color. And if I had some purple, maybe I would do some purple in there. So that is one way to do your pomegranate seeds. Then the other way is to use the Q-tip. And you can just um, dip your Q-tip in your water, dip it in your red paint, and then I'm just gonna go over this and just, I can just dot, 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 dot. That looks really good too. I like the combination. So you can do um, just the marker if you want to do just the marker. You can do just the dots with the Q-tip, or you can do both. And then I'm gonna come over here with some of the purple. And that makes the membrane show up a little bit more, doesn't it? You see it more? And then maybe I will dip the other end in the red again. Get some more red going over here. 
All right. And then one of the things that always happens for me when I'm eating a pomegranate is some of the seeds always fall out. You have to be so careful because they always stain. So I just wanna use my Q-tip and make a few seeds on the table. They can be bigger and smaller and you can decide how many you want. There are five people in my family, so I think I'm gonna do five seeds. And there we go. So now um, I can paint the crown of my pomegranate. I'm gonna use my smallest brush, come up here in the red, and just kind of trace my M shape. Fill it in. On that triangle part. And then just because I like to get a little bit more of that shading in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of purple and I'm coming over to show you. I dipped my brush in the purple and I don't want too much purple, so I'm coming over here to my, the top of my palette and just rubbing off some of the purple. I don't want I don't want it to be too wet. So I don't want to stick my hand in the wet paint. Just gonna come over here and just kinda go over the edges a little bit, make the edges a little darker. So that looks a little bit rounder. Awesome. Okay, so the next step is to add a shadow to our pomegranate. So there's our highlight, which means that our light is coming from somewhere over here. Like let's just pretend that our water cup is the light. And so it's reflecting here, making a shadow here on the pomegranate, but it's also going to make a shadow on the table. It's called a cast shadow. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take some of my black. I have black paint right here. I'm gonna just Kind of roll some of that off onto my palette and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of trace along just that side and then I'm going to get without letting that dry I'm going to get this brush wet this is just water and I'm just going to pull that out just pull it out pull out that black shadow Same thing, just a little bit of black, and I'm gonna come right under our wedge. I'm gonna come in here with some water and just pull that out. even going to do it a little bit with my seeds. A little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a cast shadow. And just pull it out with my a little bit of water on my brush. And it is that simple. That's it. And now you can think about adding some leaves, some green leaves if you want to around your pomegranate. And you can write Shana Tova 
or you could write Happy New Year. You can write that on the inside. Shana Toba, Happy New Year. Happy Sweet New Year. And then you can write your name, just your first name. And then when you're done, if you would have your mom or your dad drop this off at Door Tikva, there will be a box or a basket waiting for it. And we will get your beautiful artwork and your special card to some of the very special people in our synagogue, and they will be so grateful. Thank you so much for your help.